the muscle mass threshold that keeps you out of nursing homes. You want freedom at 80? Build it at 40. There's a muscle mass floor, literal kilograms, that determines whether you're gardening or getting sponge baths in 2054. Doctors call it sarcopenia's point of no return. Bodybuilders accidentally avoid it. Runners frequently miss it. The measurement lives in DEXA scans, correlates with stair climbing speed, and nobody's teaching you the minimum effective dose to stay vertical. Welcome to Alpha Attraction, where we give straight shooting advice on attraction, style, and living well as a man. Here's the part nobody explains clearly. Staying active is not the same thing as staying capable. Movement without forced production looks responsible, but it doesn't protect the floor you're standing on. There is a number medicine uses to quietly classify risk. It doesn't care how motivated you feel. It doesn't respond to optimism. It measures how much of you can resist gravity when something goes wrong. Medicine knows this, quietly. Doctors don't talk about it at dinner parties, but they measure it in clinics. They watch lean mass the same way insurers watch risk. Because muscle isn't about strength, it's about margin. And once you fall below it, the rules change. Not loudly, not dramatically, just permanently. The question isn't whether you'll live longer. The question is which side of that threshold you'll be standing on when it matters. Point one, nobody regrets being too strong in old age. Here's what most grown men do wrong. Once life feels settled, they stop pushing strength. Not because they're lazy, but because strength starts to feel unnecessary, almost inappropriate. It gets quietly labeled as vanity or worse, aggression. So training shifts from building to maintaining, from progress to preservation. And that shift happens far earlier than it should. What to do instead? Treat strength like insurance you actually use. Not something you admire on paper, but something that shows up when life gets clumsy. Extra strength isn't about lifting more in the gym. It's about joints that don't complain when you twist. Balance that doesn't panic when the ground surprises you. Confidence that stays steady because your body isn't negotiating every movement. Excess capacity changes how you move through the world. You sit differently. You stand differently. There's a quiet calm to it. Not dominance. Not showing off. Just the absence of strain. People feel that before you say a word. And let's be honest for a moment. No one has ever reached their later years and said, I really wish carrying groceries was harder. No one has complained about opening jars too easily or standing up without planning it first. Here's the payoff. Strength doesn't chase attention. It gives options. Options to move without thinking, to recover without drama, to live without constant micro-adjustments. And this is where the open loop matters. Because strength gained early behaves very differently than strength chased late. Timing, not effort, decides which side of that line you end up on. Point two, you can't buy back muscle mass at 70. Here's the mistake most men make. They assume decline is something that can be handled later, that if it becomes a problem, money will solve it, technology will assist it, doctors will manage it. So responsibility gets quietly outsourced to the future, where solutions are assumed to be better, faster, and available on demand. What to do instead? Treat muscle like a time-sensitive asset, because it is. Muscle isn't a savings account you can refill at will. It's closer to equity. Build it early, and it compounds. Neglect it, and the cost of rebuilding rises every year. There's a comforting myth about muscle memory that gets misused here. Yes, the body remembers, but remembering how to grow is not the same as being able to grow. Aging muscle cells become less responsive to the signals that once worked effortlessly, that resistance is real. Even medicine admits it quietly under the term anabolic resistance. Progress slows, effort rises, and results become harder to bank. This is why late intervention feels frustrating. You're doing the work, but the return isn't the same. Not because you're failing, but because the window has narrowed. Think of it like trying to reinforce a bridge after the weight limit signs are already posted. You can make repairs, but you'll never restore the original margin of safety. And this leads to the next critical distinction. Because many men believe they're protecting themselves simply by staying active. But activity and capability are not interchangeable. And that difference explains more outcomes than anyone wants to admit. Point three, falls don't kill elderly people. Weak muscles do. 
Here's the wrong way most men think about this. They blame the environment. The stairs were steep, the floor was slick, the ice was unexpected, bad luck, wrong timing. So the solution becomes avoiding risk. Move slower, hold railings, do balance drills, and hope for the best. That approach feels careful. It's also incomplete. What to do instead? Understand what muscles actually do in real life. They are shock absorbers. When you slip, your body has milliseconds to decelerate. Strong muscles slow the fall. They redirect force. They give you a second chance to catch yourself or at least control the landing. This isn't about reflexes. It's about reaction force. The ability to push back against gravity fast enough to change the outcome. And if you do go down, muscle decides the next chapter. Can you brace? Can you get up? Can you recover without turning a simple moment into a long-term problem? The floor isn't dangerous. The inability to get up is. Picture two identical slips, same surface, same speed, same surprise. One man absorbs the shock, stands up annoyed, and continues his day. The other hits hard, stays down longer than planned, and suddenly the situation has witnesses, concern, and consequences. The difference wasn't luck. It was reserve. And here's the part most men never notice. Every year, without realizing it, they make a silent trade. A little less muscle for a little more comfort, a little less resistance for a little more ease. It feels harmless in the moment. Until one day, the trade comes due. The muscle mass threshold explained. Here's the wrong way most men approach this. They track weight, BMI, waist size. They celebrate stability as if it's progress. They assume decline is slow, linear, and predictable. That the body will give fair warning before it stops cooperating. That mindset is quietly dangerous. What to understand instead? Muscle loss doesn't creep, it accelerates. And when it hits a tipping point, it cascades. Sarcopenia isn't simply weakness, it's the loss of reserve. The margin that lets you move without thinking, recover without struggle, and live without calculating every step. There is a non-negotiable floor of lean mass. Below it, daily life starts asking for permission. Above it, the world stays cooperative. Clinicians measure it quietly, DEXA scans, grip strength, stair climbing speed. These aren't arbitrary numbers. They are real predictors of independence. Think of it like a savings account. You can spend responsibly, feel secure, and think nothing will happen. Then one unexpected emergency arrives, and suddenly the account is empty. That's what crossing the muscle mass threshold feels like. And this is where the open loop matters. Strength gained late in life behaves very differently from strength built early. The timing, the consistency, the foundation, all of it decides whether you stay independent or start negotiating with gravity. If you've stayed with me this far, I want you to do one simple thing. Drop one word in the comments, just strength. Why? Because it's proof you made it to the end, that you didn't just skim, that you're the kind of man who sees the value in knowing, not just scrolling. And here's the truth. Men who stick around, who absorb this information, they're different. They act before it's too late. They build the foundation others assume they can always get later. By writing that word, you're signaling to yourself and to this community that you're part of the group that actually takes control of their future. Bonus point, every pound of muscle you lose is a freedom you give up. As a thank you for sticking with the video until this point, here's a bonus you won't wanna miss. Most men think freedom is measured by time or money alone. They plan vacations, budgets, schedules, and milestones, believing that's what makes life flexible. That's the wrong way to see it. What to do instead? Muscle itself is permission. Permission to move without hesitation, to travel without overthinking every step, to recover from unexpected challenges without drama. Every pound you lose isn't just weight, it's a small restriction on your life. Your choices shrink before your body does. This isn't theory, it's the deepest payoff of everything we've discussed. Build strength early, preserve it intentionally, and you keep doors open that most men never even notice are closing. Muscle isn't vanity. It's freedom you carry with you every day, quietly deciding whether life stays simple or suddenly negotiable. Let's recap quickly. The muscle threshold decides your independence. Strength is never regretted. Lost muscle is not easily reclaimed. Weakness, not falls, ends freedom. And as a bonus, muscle equals choice. If you found this valuable, like the video to support our growth 
Subscribe for daily content and share with someone who needs it. Check out the recommended video on your screen next. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back soon.